or a walking stick, a hiking stick, a hiking staff, a hiking pole, anything that you can find that's about this length that you would carry with you every day. This is one of the best, most perfect prep for self-defense tools for when stuff hits the fan because it is a regular hiking stick. I use this Japanese Joe for a hiking stick. A hiking stick and a staff, it's just what you call it. They're all about the same. It's either wood or metal, something, maybe even plastic, but something that's mostly lightweight, long, looks like a stick. You use it to help yourself get around. And the nicest thing about it is you can also use it as a quick self-defense tool. So I'm gonna show you right away, you can thrust here, you can snap it back like that. You can put it in the backhand. You can thrust here, bring it through, striking in all of these different ways. And I want to show you how to do that, how to get comfortable with using your hiking stick or your walking stick for self-defense, practicing with a Japanese Joe. But it can be a broomstick. It can be a mop handle. It can be anything you want it to be, just as long as it's a piece of wood. Now, this one specifically is made for self-defense. It's made out of hickory. It's 54 inches, but if you want to measure one for yourself, you want a walking stick or a hiking staff that allows you to bend the elbow at a 90 degree angle here and have five or six inches here. So for most of us, that means it comes up to about where your armpit starts. Good morning, Matthew. It's good to see you. So in this position, there are a lot of things that you can do, but I want you to warm up with this thrusting motion first. So if you have a bag, you would now strike the bag and practice this full extension of your body and this rotation of your shoulders and hips. If you don't have a bag or a striking surface, don't strike on it. Hello, Magnus. It's good to see you. It's in my back hand. This is my right hand. The left foot goes forward. Bring your other hand up and practice this first most basic strike as part of your warm up. You're just going to turn and rotate and extend. And from the beginning, I want you to get into the habit of full extension and rotating through your shoulders and hips to generate more stopping power when you're using your walking stick for self-defense. This is how you can use your walking stick for self-defense. One foot's forward, the other one's back, just pushing, getting the blood to flow. You can do the standing or sitting. If you have to sit, sitting's fine. After you do this for 30 seconds in one hand, put it into the other hand and then start to do the same thing on the other side. I always want you to be ambidextrous, always practice evenly on both sides. One side's gonna feel natural, one side's gonna feel a little wonky or a little different. That's good. That means you're getting the desired benefit. You're starting to create brain elasticity in your, your training. Anytime you fight, with a martial arts style weapon or a walking stick for self-defense. You wanna use both sides of the body and make your body and mind come together working stronger. Now, after you've done the warm up for 30 seconds on each side, I want you to start to warm up smaller muscle groups. So you're gonna go into this rotation in your wrist, just back and forth. And depending on the weight of your walking stick or your Japanese Joe, if you have a Japanese Joe, it's going to pull your hand around more or less, and you can go faster or slower, listen to your body. You wanna stay safe from injury during this workout. After 30 seconds, warming up this wrist, put it in the other hand, you need 30 seconds warming up this wrist. And if you've been training with me for a while with the Japanese Joe or with the walking stick for self-defense, I'm gonna give you a new striking combination today that's gonna to challenge you and give you some new skill and technique also, it's going to help with the brain elasticity. Good morning, Doug. Welcome. I'm glad we finally got to connect and see each other online. Back and forth, twisting. After 30 seconds here, I'm going to go from one hand to the other hand. Matthew says he's left-handed by nature. He's trying to use his right hand. Excellent, Matthew. That's always a good idea. Learn how to use both sides of the body. And if one's not very good, that's great. I'm glad you're struggling. I hope you struggle and you don't quit. And when you struggle and you don't quit, you grow, you get better, you get stronger, faster. So you're just bringing it here, pinky to pinky, palms facing up, turn it out, bring it back, turn it out. This is gonna get you familiar with going from one hand to the other hand. Your heart rate's gonna rise just a little bit. You're gonna start to break a light sweat, possibly. 
especially if you do the standing and you speed up as you go. Now, you're properly warmed up. We started with a basic thrust. Now I want you to do that thrust and turn your hand over, almost like you're punching and turning over. Matthew says his struggle is real. Yes, I understand that, Matthew. And Doug says thanks for the help. You're welcome, Doug. Thanks for being here. So we have this thrusting motion here, and then I have a turning motion where you're gonna use the long side of your staff to smash him right across his skull for self-defense. It's a very effective self-defense tool. Hello, David from the UK. So I'm gonna punch and turn, and that brings it to this side. Now today, I want you to challenge yourself, and once you get it over here, bring it back to this side with another turn. And the way that you do that is you put your thumb you lead with your thumb on both of these. Your palm faces the sky, the pinky finishes, and then you let the weight of the, the weapon, the weight of the walking stick, pull it, momentum pulls it back over here. So you're going to step with the left foot forward, when it, or right foot forward, once in your right hand, you're going to thrust and turn, and then bring it back. Thrust, turn it over, and bring it back. So if this is the attack, as he's coming in, I start to intercept his forward motion. He's trying to hurt me. This is, we're going to say this is the threat. As the threat's coming in, I'm aiming right for something I can remove or destroy. That's a question you're going to have to ask yourself. What are you going to remove or destroy? What targets are you going to acquire? You're going to seek and destroy with this smart weapon right here. It's smart because it's in your hand and your brain is controlling it. You're going to look for eyes, nose, mouth, teeth, throat, solar plexus, Anything that this hard piece of hickory, this one's hickory, you see the first link below, it just, it's just going to destroy, smash, it's going to stop the fight very quickly. Um, Doug asked, do I use the neck and as a primary target? Doug, I keep everything center line, the clavicle. If I happen to hit it and break it, that's great, but I'm going for, I'm going for a knockout first if I can. If, if it's a threat, I don't know what he's got. I don't know if there are two or three more coming. I don't know if someone's sneaking up behind me, getting ready to smash me in the back while this guy's distracting me. I want to, if I can, I'm going straight for the head, right? Now, from here, I'm going to turn it over on this second strike. And I know that this long piece of hickory, which is very heavy and extremely strong, going up against someone's skull for self-defense is likely going to knock them out at the least. And if I can do that, I don't have to worry about when he pulls out that other weapon. I don't have to worry about when his two or three buddies come up and try to jump me all at once while he's trying to distract me. So here, I'm pushing and I'm coming over. Once it gets to this side, I'm then going to bring it back onto the other side. Now, if you're practicing this at home and you haven't done this before, do these lightly against the target first because there will be some bounce back and you might hit yourself. And if your wrist isn't strong enough here, you probably will hit yourself. This is more of a warming up practice. I want you to get in the habit of forward, over, and then back. Forward, over, and back. And then putting it together in a figure eight spinning motion is gonna to start to build strength, speed, power in your grip, improve your balance, coordination, all of those things as you practice this figure eight spin, which is the exact same spin, if you had the bow staff or the longer staff, it's the same thing, but you're holding it the way you would hold your walking stick or your hiking staff. Hello, combat application and marksmanship. Hello from Germany. Uh, he talks about the series of cane self-defense. Thank you very much. Appreciate your accolades, your support. But you're gonna do this for 30 seconds. Get your heart rate up as you get familiar with it and your hands get stronger, your wrist gets stronger, your forearm gets stronger, your shoulders get stronger. Increase the speed, going faster and faster, staying behind your staff for self-defense. Now that spin, you're not gonna do that spin by itself as a defensive move. You're gonna use part of the spin. You're gonna use that right across his head, maybe his clavicle, like Doug said, maybe into that upper arm. Maybe he's reaching forward with a knife, he's trying to hit you, and you're moving backward as you do it. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today too, moving backward and moving off on the angle. But I wanna give you another self-defense technique using your walking stick. This is how to use your walking stick for self-defense. It's a perfect prepper self-defense tool for when stuff hits the fan 
any, you can carry any stick, right, for self-defense. From here, I'm gonna lift it into this front hand, and I have a simple thrusting motion. If he's coming in fast, it's all about immediate direct explosive. Try to, Matthew says he's feeling it in his shoulders and elbows. Yes, you're gonna feel this one. So go slowly, slowly, Matthew. Don't tear anything. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Give your body time, get your ego out of the way, give your body time to grow into it. He's coming in, I'm gonna intercept. This is all about interception today. He, he's, he's trying to hurt me, he's trying to take something from me, my dignity, my life, my health. I'm gonna intercept him with this long piece of hickory. From here, then I'm gonna thrust. I'm gonna go straight in, aiming for anything I can remove or destroy. Doug asks, do you rotate the hips and shoulders? On this one, start with the hand. As you get better with it, start to get more shoulders and hips. Squeeze your stomach up and in. Get your abs tight. Use less arm and more shoulders and hips. So the answer is yes, build up to more shoulders and hips. That was a great question, Doug, thank you. It's technique number two, I bring it in, I intercept. We did this with the shorter staff the other day, the, han, the uh, Japanese hanbo. So with the joe or the walking stick or hiking staff, hiking pole, maybe you've got a telemarking pole, he's coming in with an attack. This goes between me and him. You can even retreat just a little bit or even better, slide into him and let this break up between his legs or into his face or up under his chin and stop him here and then push him off. Hello, Patrick, it's good to see you from Slovakia. Uh, from here, I'm thrusting straight in. So I bring it up and thrust. If you have to, step in or if you can, I always like to intercept and step in at the same time. Really intercept them and stick this wherever I can get it and then push. Now from here, I've got resistance of his body. I'm gonna slide this hand forward and this hand forward. So from here, I just slide down, take a new grip here. My hand never leaves the staff. I'm always on my walking stick. My back hand starts to push it. So you're pushing as you slide and that strike accelerates and then you're hitting even harder than you did. This is a hard strike. This is an even harder strike because again, you're turning shoulders and hips. Hello, Frederick, it's good to see you. You're bringing this in, thrust, slide, strike. From here, slide your hand up and push this one sideways horizontally into the, uh, the jaw. Doug says his trigger finger issues are better using the staff, I believe that's true. That happens a lot, I get a lot of people tell me their arthritic hands, shoulders, wrists, elbows feel so much better practicing with the martial arts staff or the walking stick. Two, three, it's just you're getting blood flowing in there. One, you're starting to change the neurological uh, connection there. One, two, three. I'm not a doctor, I'm just reporting what people tell me. One, two, three. From here, it's just coming straight up. And, rem and don't bring it out here. Remember, the attack is coming in here. Bring it straight up, thrust, slide, back and bring this one together. Patrick said he was able to get outside and practice today. That's beautiful, I'm glad it's beautiful there for you. One, thrust, two, three. And then I wanna show you kind of a new technique that I've been working on. Um, it's just because I want you to constantly challenge yourself to grow and do new things. From this position, in the front hand, we've been all in the back hand so far. This is in the back hand, my right foot is back. I don't know, you can see, let me move the bag a little bit so you can see the mirror some more. Ah, that made it worse. All right, we'll leave it at that. My right leg is back. I'm holding it in the right hand. This is the first motion. This is the second, the third, and then I wanted you to practice this striking combination. Now, that's all from the back hand. What if it's in your front hand? I'm walking, and it's, oh, it's only front and back, depending on which foot you have forward, right? Whether the hand is in front of your body or behind your body. So let's say it's in my left hand. I have my left foot forward. I'm gonna push my thumb. I'm gonna point my thumb right at the threat. We're gonna call this the threat again. So from here, I point my thumb at the threat, and then I'm gonna push, kind of like a pull cue, 
but not, you know, not like this, like this. And I'm going to turn this backhand up and in to lock it and accelerate the strike. The front hand is going to turn down. I slide and as I get to the distance that I want, my hand will then close, squeezing as this one turns up. And then if I step and do that, when you step, you're going to really create massive stopping power. So that's the first part of this technique. Now I want you to pull with the back hand all the way down so that your front hand is on the very tip. This is to keep you from smashing yourself in the face on this next technique. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Let's make this guy a little taller. And let me give you guys a little bit better angle. Uh, Doug asks, what do I think about rubber tips for thrusting onto the target? Doug, I think wood is soft enough so you're not gonna destroy the target. Um, and at the same time, if you use a Joe like I do for a hiking stick, I've, I, I, these get scratched up, right? But it's such a hard wood. This hickory is such a hard wood. It does, you just sand it and, and re-oil re, uh, it and it's fine. But you can get those cane tips or furniture, like uh, chair uh, feet, like at a hardware store. They even have them at most, because um, they sell them with the canes. If you go into like CVS pharmacy or one of these pharmacies, then they, you go to a little section, they have canes. They usually have a cane tip that'll fit on the end and that'll protect your cane from getting all roughed up and then it'll protect the target but it won't protect his face because that hard piece of rubber is still, you know, it's, it's supported by this big, long uh, hickory staff or, bows or oak staff or whatever yours is made out of. So yeah, go and get one of those tips and try that and see if that works for you. If it's in your front hand and you point it and you thrust, you're gonna pull it back and then you're gonna lift this up. And I, let me get the camera a little lower. I've got this jerry rig system right here. Jerry rig, that's funny. I, I was thinking, you know, there are all these sayings that we say that probably are not politically correct. I've never really thought about what, uh, where that comes from, but it's probably not, not a positive thing. Maybe, so from here, I'm gonna point it and thrust. We're gonna call that his private parts, his groin between his legs. So from here, you're going to thrust, pull. See how my hand's just here on the tip? And then I'm gonna slide this pushing I'm accelerating with this hand as I slide this up under his groin, or I can go higher into his chin, bust him right of the chin. So from here, thrust, pull, and then up under the chin. Now that's not the end of the technique. I said the chin, but I meant the groin. The groin of the chin, wherever you wanna hit him. So from here, push, pull, thrust. Now, see where this hand is? I want you to practice this new technique because I want your brain to grow. This is brain elasticity. From here, your hand's gonna turn over. From this technique, you can just let it fly if you wanted to. But I'm gonna show you how to change the other hand over and bring it down on top, almost like a sword, or like you're chopping somebody, chopping a tree down. You're gonna crack him right in the middle of his skull for self-defense. So from here, it's in the front hand. This is my left foot. My left hand, my left foot's in front, my right foot's back. I'm gonna point it, it pops it, just that motion. You need to practice this over and over. Just turn, turn from here, thrust, pull, strike. And then watch this front hand first. Now look at the back hand and it also will change. Now I'm back into the same uh, split grip technique and I'm gonna go over the head and straight down. Maximum force and power. That's one of the strongest strikes you'll have with your walking stick for self-defense. This is how to use a walking stick for self-defense. It's in the front hand. I point the thumb, thrust, pull. I'm gonna slide up under his groin, strike and lift him off the ground, and then immediately from here, going down on top of the head. Now, that's not gonna be super smooth for you until you practice it a bunch, so practice it a bunch. But this is gonna be really good for brain elasticity. This is gonna keep you younger and more vital. You're gonna point the thumb, thrust, pull, strike, changing hand and straight over top, finishing here. So from here, we go one, two, oh wait, I missed it, messed it up there. Thrust, down, up. We have to do that first and then bring it through and down over the head. Now, 
that's not enough because I really want your brain to grow. I want to challenge you and I hope it's hard for you and you struggle a little bit as you learn it. I hope you struggle and you don't quit. And when you struggle and don't quit, that's when you grow. You never grow inside your comfort zone. Growth only happens on the outside of the comfort zone. So from here, front foot, I'm gonna thrust. As you get in this position, you point the thumb. As you thrust, I want you to step one, two, right, left, to the right. Or once you switch, because you are gonna switch on both sides, from here, you're gonna go left, right, whichever foot's back, you go in that way, and then the front foot. Now that turned me at an angle. Now I'm gonna thrust. I'm still hitting him in the center line, but it's coming at an angle that he has a hard time seeing and blocking. So I'm gonna strike here, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm still gonna strike here, and I'm still going to finish here. And then I'm going to switch into the other hand. Point first, step as you thrust, come back up under the body or the chin, changing hands, and strike. And I'm gonna get closer and show you the hand change one more time, but let me show you a couple more repetitions here. Now you're gonna go side to side. This is where your heart rate's gonna get up, you're gonna lean out, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna get fighting fit when you learn how to use a walking stick for self-defense. From here, you're gonna point and thrust, pull up under the chin, and then down on top. But I forgot, I forgot we're stepping offline. Point first, that's number one, get in the ready position. Two, thrust, in, uh, change up under the chin, down on top, put it in the other hand, step back into the center line. From here, first ready position, strike, up, down on top, other hand, ready position. Oh, forgot my step, thrust, but see, and this, this is why I want you to do it. I keep forgetting the step. I have to slow my brain a little bit or slow my, my movement at first. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I've got to eat my own cooking. I have to uh, get out of my comfort zone because I'm no longer smooth and fast. I'm not doing the things that I'm really good at. I'm doing something new. And that's why I want you to do it. So from here, point, step off, thrust, pull, up under the chin, down on top, switch, get here. From here, step first. I almost forgot it again. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Eventually, this will get easy. For me, it'll get easy for you, and then we'll find something else to do that's not easy, because again, I want you to struggle. I want you to at least once in every workout. Some things, you know, easy. Some things will become easier the more you do them. Some things will become easy. Just practicing the basic technique. This will become smoother and faster for you. And then, when you then start to step off the line, it'll start to become easier and smoother. And then we have to find something new because you have to constantly challenge yourself to grow. Now, I wanted to uh, finish with some of those mobility exercises for the hands. And finger rolls are easily my favorite roll. Doug said he's gonna get the 7 8 inch Quantum, this is the quantum protector staff, by the way. I named them the quantum self protection staff because I want you to learn or to train in a way because a lot of people just like to get into the fancy spinning and all of the cool things that you can do on the martial arts side are really fun. But I, I wanted you to have the mindset that when you train with a staff, you're, whether it's you're learning how to use a walking stick for self defense or um, you're just a uh, passionate about martial arts weapons. I wanted you to think self-defense, 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 self-defense over and over again, because I think so often, David says, thanks for the time and knowledge. You're welcome, David. Thank you. I think so often we just get in the habit of practicing the easy, fun stuff, the unique stuff, the different stuff, but we forget until someone throws a punch at your face or slap against your face or starts shoving you around or gets up in your face or starts to puff up or make a threat or you find yourself late at night in the wrong place, the wrong time, and then you think, uh, what was I supposed to do again? And it shouldn't be like that. It should be, your language should be like, you should be fluent. You should be fluent in self-defense first. That should be your first language. That should be the language that you speak. Whether you're a martial artist or you just, you're passionate about self-defense, you should be fluent in self-defense and it should come out of you first. 
And then all of the fancy stuff, spinning through your fingers to make your grip stronger, which is why we do it, to heal your hands, which is why we do it. You do that, that's in addition. But if you make your first language, you know, you meet somebody and they're fluent in two or three languages, but always the language that they grew up with, they're fluent in the best. That's the, you know, that's how you think. That's what they dream in, right? So I want you to dream in self-defense. How do you uh, move your body? How do you defend yourself? Situational awareness. Um, when you get out of the car, when you open the house to your apartment or your door or your bedroom, you look what's close around, then you look uh, what's a little bit further out, and you think and you ask yourself questions. Where might there be a threat? And probably nowhere, which is great. But I came home last night, my wife caught me. She caught me not eating my own uh, cooking again. And she said, hey, uh, when you came in, did you notice that that table that you put out for the trash the other day, was that still there or was it behind the bush? And I looked at her, I said, why? <laughs> behind the bush? I said, no, I did not. I was not paying attention. When I got out of my own car at my own house, I'd fallen into the trap of complacency because it's familiar and it's routine. And, but it was a good, and she wasn't trying to catch me. She was just, she pointed out though, because she likes, you know, she's good at, and, and that's why I love, I love her for so many reasons, but that's one of the great things she does is she helps me, keep me accountable, especially in martial arts and self-defense. You know, practice what you preach, buddy. That's the basic message. But, uh, and they, they had been out for the trash, somebody wanted it, so they moved it behind the bush, and then she didn't know if that person had come and gotten it behind the bush or not. But I didn't look, I didn't know. I didn't know how to answer the question because or I couldn't answer the question because I had I was not paying attention. I parked right next to it. So I had to go outside and look and see if it was there or not because I didn't I didn't do the situational awareness. So make that your first language. Start thinking about situational awareness. Um, yeah, Doug says, as a police officer, use the police officer perspective for observation. Every yeah, you have to think in those terms. And start to, because you're learning how to use a walking stick for self-defense, start to make it your habit that if you don't have your walking stick with you and you're out at, in public or you're in an, a new area, or you're unfamiliar, maybe you're at school or you're at uh, your job or you're shopping or you're at the grocery store, you're getting gas and you don't have it, look around and try to find something that you would use to augment what you have naturally. You give something you could pick up to either throw, I do that all the time. I have, um, I'm always looking for something that if I had nothing else and a guy had some kind of weapon that I could create with distance that I could at least throw and I practice throwing, I throw right hand, left hand every single day so that my accuracy with both hands is dead on or as dead as I can get it. And, my, and if I can hit some guy with something either here or here, distract him enough to either close the distance or get out of there or get my family free, that's what I want to be able to do. I want you to be able to do that too. That's being fluent in self-defense. So the more you think about that, the more learning how to fight with a walking stick for self-defense makes sense because you'll look around and you'll see walking sticks everywhere or you'll see sticks everywhere, all different sizes. And you'll think, oh, I could pick up that umbrella. I could pick up that um, long spatula at the barbecue or behind at the hibachi restaurant, right? Or, or wherever it is. Or you could, a lot of uh, store, uh, nicer restaurants and they have the wooden chairs you put it on a side and you kick it really hard and you knock off one of the legs and then you have a fighting stick so there are lots of fighting sticks everywhere but go through your day try to make it your habit to look for what will you defend yourself with and then come back to this video please please come back here and put in the comment section what weapons did you find for self-defense if you were a prepper and you're prepping for when stuff hits the fan or you're just um you, you want to be safe you want to stay safe that's why you I've been researching. That's why you're training, how to use a walking stick for self-defense. So come back here and put in the comment section, what other weapons did you find? What can you throw? What can you pick up and smash with, hit with? What can you shield with? Because sometimes it's about shielding first. The attack comes in, you shield. But I always like to shield one more time with this type of motion or this type of motion. And notice that each time I'm stepping in. If, I, if he's coming in here and the punch is coming or the knife or whatever, and I step in and intercept, and I slide this in, the next thing I do is strike him and finish him off. That's my goal for self-defense. Make that your fluency, make that, yeah, big bottle of water, David says. You guys have been awesome, especially if it's a glass, right? You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for all